It's so good to be with you this Easter season. Thank you for inviting us into your home today. Today we will worship and we will give praise to the Lord God through His Son, Jesus Christ, who was raised from the dead. Please join me in today's call to worship. Break forth together into singing you ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. Please join us in our opening hymn, number 618, Let Us Break Bread Together. something exciting to share with y'all. A few weeks ago, my family, we got a new puppy and I brought a picture of her. There you go. Here she is. This is Chloe. Isn't she cute? We love her. We're having a lot of fun with her. But you know, she's only been with us a few weeks, but in those few weeks, I've noticed something. If my girls, if Casey and Lindsay, if they come in the front door or maybe they go out the back door in, in the yard where she is, if they call her name, she comes running and she is so excited to see them. She is jumping and she's licking and she will follow them wherever they go. She's so excited to see them. Now, if you came to my house and you called her name, do you think she would run like to you like that? Do you think? 
I don't think so because she doesn't recognize you, right? She doesn't know you. It's just not the same. I mean, she might even bark at you, right? So why do you think she gets so excited when she hears Casey and Lindsay's voice? Well, it's because she knows that they love her and they take care of her and they feed her and they get her everything she needs. Well, that makes me think about our Bible story today. And it's in John chapter 10, verse 1 through 20. And Jesus is talking, and he's talking about a shepherd. You remember what a shepherd is? A shepherd is somebody that takes care of sheep, right? So he has all these sheep, and then he'll lead them to a big green field where they have lots of grass to eat. And um, then he'll lead them to water so they have plenty to drink. And he might even lead them into um, a shelter of some sort so that if there's a big storm that they can be taken care of. So Jesus goes on to say that the shepherd, if he speaks, those sheep, they even recognize his voice. They can hear him. They recognize who he is, and they will follow him wherever he goes. Then Jesus says, well, you know, I, Jesus, I'm like a shepherd, and you're like sheep. What does that mean? Jesus is like a shepherd, and we're like sheep. Well, we know that if we love Jesus and we know he loves us and takes care of us and does everything for us, that, you know, when he speaks, we will be able to recognize him. The better we know him, the better we'll be able to recognize him and hear his voice. Like, Miss Gina, it's just not the same. It's not the same as hearing somebody else's voice that's right in front of you, right? And you're right, it's not. It's a little bit different. I mean, when Jesus speaks, you might, be, you might hear a thought in your head or a feeling in your heart. And that's why we really, really need to study the Bible and our Bible stories to know Jesus really well. Because the better we know him, the better we'll be able to recognize his voice and know when he talks to us. Jesus loves us and he does everything for us. And we need to be able to recognize his voice and hear him when he talks. He wants what's best for us. Jesus said he came here so that we could have a good life. And we could have a good life and live it fully. And we can if we will listen to him and do what he says and follow him. Let's pray. Lord. We're thankful for this day. We're thankful for these kids to hear this message and that they're here with us. And we pray that we can become so close to you that we can actually hear your voice. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A lot has transpired since we were last together. There have been deaths, and yes, some according to the COVID virus. But there are those who've died of other ailments. And a lot of else has transpired. Great events in the lives of people have occurred. Uh, we've heard from our governor. We've heard that school is out for summer. We've also heard that, uh, well, as of this month, we are on the road to recovery, at least going back to work and back to our jobs, at least in a measured way. So there's a lot for us to pray for. As we pray today, please think of those who need our prayers the most. And maybe in the silences we will have a time to lift up names of those in need. Let us go to the Lord in prayer and we will begin with a silent prayer followed by the prayer for the fourth Sunday in Easter. Let us pray. O God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the Good Shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name, and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us now pray the prayer that our Lord Jesus Christ taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today's scripture comes from John chapter 10, verses 1 through 21, NIV version. Very truly I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. There will come, they will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come so they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then, a wolf, then when the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I laid my life down for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice. And there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life. Only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have, a th I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. The Jews who heard this, these words were again divided. Many of them said, He is a demon possessed and raving mad. Why listen to him? But others said, These are not the sayings of a man possessed by a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? The word of God for the people of God. In John chapter 10, verse 11, Jesus proclaims, I am the good shepherd. This is one of the most iconic and impactful images in all of scripture. The image of shepherd, in fact, is one of the most important images in the Bible. In the 23rd Psalm, we read, the Lord is my shepherd. This Psalm, this 23rd Psalm, is the most requested at funerals and in times of great loss that is contained within the Scripture. It speaks of our deepest emotions and it speaks of the continuing love of God. The image of the shepherd is further developed in the New Testament. It is developed in relationship to Jesus, the Christ. In verse 11, Jesus again proclaims, I am the good shepherd. But he continues saying, I am the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. What deeper love can there be than the great high God the King of Heaven would send His own Son, Jesus Christ, to come and to give up His life for those whom He loves. What a clear demonstration of God's total commitment to save not only His people, but even the lost sheep of the world. In Luke 15, 4, we read, The man who so loves the sheep would seek the one who was lost. God so loved even the individual that he would send his son to die for him. Yet, 
Jesus is more than a shepherd to us. He is the good shepherd. He's the one that loves us even to the point of death. Israel's current shepherds were not such. They were mere hired hands. They did not truly care for the sheep. The sheep, you see, belong to Jesus. And the scripture tells us that the sheep recognize his voice. In contrast, the hired hands were just that. They were paid to care for the sheep. They had no personal investment in them. In fact, custom tells us that if one wolf were to attack the sheep, the hired shepherds would defend the sheep. But if an entire pack of wolves were to attack, the hired shepherd would run away. You see, again, the hired shepherd had no interest in the sheep. But it is rather the self-sacrificing love of Jesus that the disciples just could not get their heads around her. To be more accurate, maybe their, their hearts. They could not grasp Jesus' deep love for his people that he would die for them. Further, it is deep, difficult for us to understand the deep love of God for us, for the deep love of our Savior. Charles Wesley said it best in that wonderful hymn, And Can It Be That I Should Gain? When he pens those penetrating words, Amazing love, how can it be that thou might's God should die for me? Jesus is the good shepherd. He feeds he cares for, he protects the sheep. He is the good shepherd. He is the noble shepherd. He is the worthy shepherd. He is the real shepherd. He does more than give moral direction. He does more than direct the sheep to green pastures to the place of food and water. The psalm tells us that he leads them to green pastures and continues saying he leads them beside the still waters. We're living in an anxious time, at least according to Time magazine. The cover, that is. That was the latest cover that I read while, yes, in the grocery store looking at the magazines that were there at the checkout stand. It said we we're living in an anxious time, and I, I, can only, I, I did not read the article, but I can only imagine what was in the article. I imagine that any of us could guess at least much of what it had to be saying. And while we are indeed living in a, spear, a, a spirit of, and time of, of fear, and uncertainty, I think there's a lot more to it than the COVID-19 virus. I think there's a whole lot more to it. We live in a fear-dominated world. We're seeking comfort, I believe, in, well, as the old country song would say, in all the wrong places. We seek comfort from our politicians, our government, and World Health Organizations. We want them to care for us. And yet, as I say, I think maybe there is a deeper and greater problem. Maybe, just maybe, there are many who no longer know the shepherd's voice. Maybe, just maybe, there are many who do not know the Savior Jesus, the Christ, the Good Shepherd. 
who gave up his life for we, his sheep. There may be some of you today who are struggling with the events of the week, or maybe all of the events since the COVID virus has hit. Maybe there are other matters that you are struggling with. You're seeking assurance, you're seeking comfort. You're really looking for one who cares. For a shepherd who will guide, protect, and lead. Let me invite you today to invite Christ into your heart. Into your hearts and receive him today. He loves you dearly. In the name of God the Father. In the name of God the Son, in the name of God the Holy Spirit, amen. We invite you to join in singing our closing hymn today, number 381, Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us. Now go forth in the power of the resurrection, in the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, in the name of God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.